So in 1988, voters approved Proposition 99, the Tobacco Tax and Health Protection Act. This initiative raised the tax on cigarettes for the first time in over 20 years, from 10 cents per pack to 35. In addition, the initiative imposed a new excise tax on other tobacco products as well, which, up to that point, had been inexplicably exempt. For products composed of at least 50% tobacco, this tax would be applied as a percentage of the item's wholesale price at a rate equivalent to the tax on cigarettes. It would adjust automatically from year to year in order to incorporate any changes in price and mirror any amendments to the tax on cigarettes. Another characteristic that made Prop 99 unique was that for the first time it ensured that a portion of California's tobacco tax would be set aside for a dedicated purpose. Instead of depositing that extra 25 cents into the general fund and leaving its fate in the hands of lawmakers, Prop 99 specified in advance what types of programs that additional revenue could support. In this case, at least 45% of the proceeds would go toward health care for the poor, another 20% would fund educational programs on personal health and tobacco use, 5% would support research on tobacco-related disease, and another 5% would support outdoor initiatives like fire prevention and public parks. The remaining 25% could go toward any one of these purposes depending on need in a given year. Although California's tobacco tax had languished for some time, Prop 99 instantly catapulted it to being the second highest in the nation, just behind Minnesota's. That sounds impressive, but it's also worth noting that if the rate had simply kept pace with inflation, then a 10-cent tax in 1967 would have equaled almost 40 cents by 1988. The rate we ended up with instead, 35 cents, isn't far off that mark, so the real increase may not have been quite as dramatic as California's jump in the rankings suggested. This abrupt leap forward started a trend that would play itself out at least one more time in California's history. But perhaps the bigger pattern to emerge from Prop 99 was how the state would treat its tobacco tax revenue at all. Prop 99 convinced elected officials that Californians weren't quite as averse to tobacco taxes as they once were. However, lawmakers also recognized that voters had agreed to that increase with the caveat that it be used for a particular purpose. Even when it came to tobacco taxes, which are relatively uncontroversial, voters weren't prepared to give lawmakers a blank check. 